Gracious, loving Father, thank you so much. What a pleasure it is uh, at this hour on a Wednesday evening, we can come together and continue to uh, learn from you, from your scriptures that you preserved for us. Thank you for opening our hearts and our minds to the desire to want to learn and lead us, Father, as we look for truth, as we look for uh, your precious knowledge, especially in a world of confusion, in a world where uh, there is so much uh, that is not right, but thank you that you are continuing to lead us and be with us. So we commit Praveen into your hands and ask for your blessings on our time together and on our, on our discussions. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Over to you, Praveen. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Pastor. Uh, good evening to you all. And last week we were supposed to have Bible study. Unfortunately, due to power cut, we could not uh, uh, have the Bible study. Uh, however, uh, I would be, I mean, speaking about the same topic which which I have prepared for the last week. Uh, the topic is uh, emotions and uh, Christian faith. Emotions and Christian faith. For many of you, what I'm going to speak, some of them would be would be already known to you, but uh, it is good for us to uh, engage in a discussion about it so that we can find many more uh, perspectives about uh, these important subjects. So let's move into the subject. We all know very well that we emotions are such a great blessing in our lives as well as they are, uh, they create such a pain in our life. Sometimes we feel uh, it's better if I, if I didn't have any emotions would have been uh, much better. That's what uh, sometimes we feel. And sometimes we looking at others, we say, are, this man can doesn't have any emotions or what he could not even relate to a particular pain or a particular situation. You know, that's what we will be speaking. It's all because we humans are emotional beings. Human beings are emotional creatures. We love, we hate, we feel happy, we feel angry, we feel sad, we feel joyful, we feel uh, sorry, we feel surprised. All these are some kind of emotions that we experience in our lives. And what are, what are the uses of these emotions? Primarily, the emotions, they are given to us so that they can motivate us to act. The emotions we have, they help us to start something. If you are inspired by somebody, and if you feel some particular uh, person, a particular position is desirable to you, if you liked it, if you feel good about it, and that inspires you to act, uh, to achieve that position. Uh, and uh, in the same way, the emotions help us to avoid dangers. If you had any bad experience, because we feel sorry or sad, next time what we do, we avoid those particular uh, acts and we avoid uh, uh, any anything that is going to hurt us, make us feel bad, sad, or sorry. So this emotion help us to avoid certain dangers. If you know that we did not go to office for a month, and if we don't have any emotions of fear, then what would happen? We continue not attending the office. Ultimately, we lose the job. This fear, this particular fear about losing the job, it is going to motivate us to avoid the danger of losing the job. And these emotions can help us to make decisions. Sometimes we, we know logically all are good. For example, uh, if there are... Uh, uh, two For example, we, we are buying car. There are two cards and the, both of them have similar configuration. There is no much difference. Both of them have both good uh, pros and cons. Same. In that time, what we do choose, we choose on the, our favorite, uh, you know, whatever we feel emotionally connected, they, those kind of cards we may buy. You know, sometimes colors, we choose colors. What is the reason behind choosing colors? Many of the times we just like it and we choose the colors. And at the same time, with emotions, we make some wrong decisions also. We might have picked up a wrong 
a person in our in a, in our lives a wrong, we might have picked up some wrong friends sometimes uh, we might have made some wrong choices regarding our career based on our emotion there may be certain kind of career which may be more suitable to our talents and our skills uh, but emotionally we are we like particular things so we might have made uh, a wrong choice also in our life so the emotions are going to help us to make uh, decisions it can be sometimes good and it can be uh, a wrong decision also and uh, ultimately and one of the main things we need to understand about is emotions help us to understand others better without emotions we may not be able to understand better we may not be able to relate to them without if somebody is crying with pain our emotions are going to help us to relate to the kind of pain the person is going through that's how we empathize with the person and uh, our emotions they help us to understand ourselves also sometimes we don't understand ourselves our emotions what we feel they help us to understand uh, uh, ourselves and ultimately what we what we can say is uh, uh, through emotions only we participate in a particular event or in a relationship or uh, friendship with any person without emotions we may not be able to uh, relate to anybody that's the reason uh, in marriages and in any friendship we feel uh, we give such a great importance to these emotions and feelings the relationships are built and relationships are broken because of the emotions so because it is because with the emotions only we will be able to tangibly experience in tangibly participate in the relationship so emotions are so very vital uh, in relationships so uh, through these emotions we relate to each other and even through these emotions only we relate to the creation in a deeper level we all love our pets because we feel a kind of emotional connection some people like trees some kind of emotional connection we feel with them so through emotions only we will be able to relate and uh, uh, experience uh, uh, understand the person in a deeper level so these vital relationships are so very important but unfortunately when sin entered into the world the sin it has also disturbed or distorted our emotional uh, love aspect of life when sin entered the world however our emotional responses became tied to our sinful nature and this uh, so to this uh, sinful nature and to this uh, suffering world so because of the sin we are not able to relate to each other with the right and proper emotions and feelings your husband may be saying something good the wife may take in a wrong sense your right wife may be doing something very good in a right, a right thing to us but we may take it in wrong sense so it's all because of emotions we our emotions emotional life has been shattered distorted because of the sin that's why we are not able to connect to uh, each other or we are not able to connect to our relationships and our friends in a perfect in a proper emotional manner we are understanding wrongly we are perceiving wrongly and we are experiencing all sorts of uh, uh, problems in our friendships and in our lives it's all because of the sin and we all know uh, when god created everything was good all was beautiful uh, god said everything is very good so god destined that we all should have a blissful joyful emotional life but unfortunately when sin entered all the negative uh, the feelings or emotions that we really don't want to experience they have entered into the world the first negative feeling feeling human experienced was shame fear guilt you know and it's uh, and the relational quotient with god has been distorted so the entire way he supposed to relate to god in a very com- comfortable manner but what happened he started feeling scared about god and was hiding behind the woods so the first negative feeling uh, entered into human life was through sin 
and the bible also speaks about our emotions and especially we find it in ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 4 where it says uh, there is a time to weep there is a time to love there is a time to mourn and there is a time to dance and uh, the list goes on and we understand one thing from this uh, in in all of our lives uh we all have to experience all this range of uh, uh, emotions and there is a time for each emotion we will be going through that's what uh, the author of ecclesiastes of the wise solomon tells us and solomon also uh, tells and he uh, he cautions us uh, through proverbs proverbs 29 verse 11 where uh, uh, it is written a fool gives full vent to his spirit but a wise man quietly holds it back and he says that a fool cannot control his emotions a wise man will have proper control over his emotion all of us have to experience all these emotions but it is very important for us you all know very well we all know this that it is very important that we have to have control over our emotions if we lose control over our emotions we will definitely fall into some or other kind of problems and uh, one of them is uh, actually philippians chapter 4 verse 7 where it is written about uh, a particular emotion when we lose our control this is where we come into do not be anxious about anything but in everything prayer and supplication with thanks god let your request be made known to god fear is uh, sometimes fear is good all the emotions are good in our lives you know the negative emotions also are good because of the as we discussed previously because of the fear we we would avoid certain dangers because of the fear we would not enter into uh, certain situations or we don't do certain works which may cause damage to us okay so fear is good but when we could when we could not have control of our fear what would happen it will lead us into anxiety and which is losing control over fear and bible encourages us not to lose control over any of our emotions so this is one of the examples we should not lose control over fear if we lose it we will get into anxiety okay and what what does emotions have anything to do with our christian faith that's what we are going to discuss today okay why emotions are important the answer is very simple it is because god created us and he asked us the commandment he gave us the two commandments we know in the old testament right and those commandments say that we have to worship the lord with all our heart which jesus also said in mark chapter 12 verse 30 uh, he said and you shall love the lord your god with all your heart with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength this is the first commandment when we have to love the lord with all our heart it also includes that we love and participate in relationship with the lord even with our uh, emotions so we we all know christianity is all about relationship with god if it, if it is relationship with god how we by default in our inbuilt nature we are emotional being so how do we involve in the relationship with god that is even through relationships uh, sorry even through emotions and feelings so our feelings are so very important for us to relate to god also so we need to worship the lord with emotions and we need to have uh, continue the relationship with god with emotions okay but at the same time we should be careful to not let our emotions control what we believe we believe certain things and our we have some emotions right our belief should uh, influence our emotions but not our emotions influence our belief system that is where we should be careful the nature of christian emotions uh, themselves are not different from the emotions of the world but rather it is why they are felt and for what they are felt uh that sets them apart so as a christian we uh, we and non believer we all go through uh, same emotions but the difference is we think about why do we feel the way we feel and they focus more on what do why uh, sorry 
uh, why do they feel the uh, so, uh, the reason behind what uh, excuse me uh, i could not form the sentence it is uh, like you know they focus more on what we focus more on why that is a difference we can find uh, between christians and non christians and as a sinner and a saint our uh, emotions will never be perfect in our life this is something we need to understand we became a christian that does not mean we have overcome all the negative emotions we have overcome all the uh, uh, you know emotions that are going to pull us down but uh, and we are going to have perfect emotional condition no even we christians also experience the distortion that caused by sin in emotions even we also suffer just like others so we cannot have uh, in fact no there is nobody who can have a perfect emotional state we all fall sometimes we all stand sometimes we all struggle sometimes we will be happy hey, all of us we will be uh, rightly be feeling some the certain things and we also feel certain things wrongly so nobody in the world have a perfect emotional state a perfect emotional uh, life uh, to experience all of us we go through that and uh, the proper understanding of the gospel and the right relationship with god god are very essential for our healthy christian emotional growth so we, as i said uh, uh, we christians also go through these problems i mean uh, we don't have a perfect emotional state but understanding the gospel in a right sense it is going to help us to uh, to be better to experience life better to uh, to have these emotions in a proper sense and we all may it may help us to grow emotionally intelligent so proper understanding of uh, gospel is very much important if improper understanding lead us into the danger of two things either stoicism or emotionalism which i am going to explain anyway huh? so if you understand the gospel in the right sense we will be having a proper emotion especially in a, a personal relationship with god and our relationship with others if you could not understand uh, the gospel well what happens is especially this is what we see with the health wealth and prosperity gospels uh, which which give a false hope to people okay a hope that is not promised by god and they leave uh, people as they hear they are emotionally boosted and they started feeling positive and they can keep that positive feeling for a while when things are uh, turning uh, more and more against them and if they experiencing if they experience something uh, which is entirely opposite to what they are they were taught what would happen emotionally they would broke down and ultimately they may lose even their faith in god so which is going to cause much more damage in their lives so a proper understanding of the gospel is very essential the wrong understanding of the gospel for example if we hear the wrong understanding of the gospel say where it says uh, uh, jesus uh, jesus crew uh, the death of jesus is not sufficient we have to add a works so that we may be saved that is a wrong gospel what happens if we believe that lifetime we will be completely focusing on work based life which is not going to satisfy us constantly we will be shunning ourselves we feel guilty we feel shame we don't have hope and uh, the life will be christian life will be miserable so it is very important to understand the right gospel so that you can have right emotional christian experience or uh, life of christian experience and if we don't uh, as i said uh if you um, uh, if you could not understand the gospel properly there are we, we may fall into two side two kind of things number one is stoicism number two is emotionalism emotionalism is what i said like you know the, the people who speak about health wealth and prosperity kind of things uh, where uh, they are promised so many things and they are given false hopes so, so they they feel emotionally strong and strong 
emotionally only they understand god it's uh, their belief their faith uh, so their experience is not based on the scripture but it is completely based on these false gospels and false hopes and uh, uh, this and which are boosted by so called positive thinking uh, christian positive thinkings uh, these kind of stuff so they they give completely themselves into these emotional things and uh, uh, these emotions and uh, what happens is our emotions also start influencing our faith so when if they are into completely these false emotions and false hope what happens is with these false emotions false hope they teach to their mind a certain beliefs and when they come to face the reality they are going to be free, they are going to feel devastated okay that is emotionalism and another side of the thing is stoicism these people they don't have any emotions okay and uh, well, even in churches we find in a hardcore conservative groups whatever is written in the dogma the doctrine is that that is more important these people whether they feel they don't feel that doesn't matter only intellectual knowledge matters the most intellectually whatever the doctrine says that only they believe completely they will focus on that only and they don't even try to relate to the, the teachings of the gospel and the doctrine in an emotional personal relational level so this is called stoics so both of them are not healthy both of them are not right we should find a proper balance uh, between what we are believing and what we are experiencing and what our emotions are uh, teaching us okay uh, emotionalism is we allow our feelings to in uh, interpret our circumstances and form our thoughts about god and the doctrine that is uh, emotionalism is and this uh, this tends to put feelings before the faith and stoicism teaches uh, our faith is rooted in theology but void of affection the tendency removes feelings from faith altogether whether it is true that our emotion should not read our should not lead our uh, theology it is vital to our faith that theology lead to a deep experience of a triune god but emotions bring sen uh, they, our doctrine should help us to experience god more emotionally and in fact our emotions are going to be, make sense of our relationship and our emotions are going to bring a sense of completion within ourselves about the relationship that we have with god so uh, zeal without knowledge is dead but knowledge without deep affection is lifeless let me repeat zeal without knowledge is dead but knowledge without deep affection is just as lifeless so as christians we are in a relationship the dogma is very important at the same time connecting to dogma and the gospel emotionally also equally important <coughs> at the same time there will be days when our emotions do not act in accordance with god's word and uh, they they emotions try to convince us that that truth is something different from what the word of god says you know we are christians as i said but that does not mean our uh, we we have perfect feelings sometimes we uh, what we feel may not be uh, related to the scripture it is very natural you we all might have experienced it and uh, but we should never ever let our emotions to influence our beliefs but we need to make sure our belief in the truth of god's word should be influencing our uh, emotions and uh, there should be this order our feelings and emotions must be governed and guided by the truth our feelings and emotions should follow the truth of the scripture that is the order that order should never change and uh, yeah an english reformer named uh, john bradford said faith must go before and then feelings will follow faith should go first and then feeling should follow it and uh, uh, sometimes our emotions can be expression of our faith uh, or what we believe 
but they should never be the basis of our faith or of our confidence. <coughs> our feelings may express our faith, <coughs> but our faith should not be based on our feelings. And fear. sometimes we also hear these people say, uh, uh, listening from people, and uh, we tend to understand that faith uh, faith is measured by our emotions. Like, you know, if you get fear, you know, scriptures, uh, Bible has given so many promises to us. If anytime you got fear, uh, that means you don't have faith. That's what people say. And, and the scripture they quote, God did not give you the spirit of fear, but he had given the spirit of adoption. So you should not, uh, you should not be feared. The, the reality is that is not true. We all get fear. Our emotions, they do not show our faith. Our emotions are not the, they don't show the measure of our faith. And we should never ever be misunderstanding, misunderstanding that. Okay. And uh, if you have faith, that does not mean you should not get any questions. You have faith that does not mean uh, you should not get any get any fears. Let me tell you, better way look at to look at this thing is better way to look at this particular situation is this. Uh, faith is not having any fear. Faith is not sorry. Let me leave. Uh, having faith does not mean you cannot have negative feelings. Okay, having faith is in spite of having negative feelings and emotions you choose to obey the word of God. In spite of having all these negative thoughts and feelings, you choose to follow God and you choose to believe what the word of God says. That is what called faith. So faith does not mean we cannot have negative feelings. And so uh, people say, if you have faith, you should not have fear. All these things are wrong. They are going to cause emotional abuse in Christian's life. We should be careful with that. And uh, another thing we need to understand is feelings are incidental, but they are not fundamental. Certain times we feel certain feelings that are going to remain only for a while. They are because of that particular incident that happened. But they are not fundamental. Some, If, if any time you could not feel the presence of God, that does not mean you are an atheist. Or you don't have a relationship with God. A lot of Christians, they come and say, I don't know about my spiritual life. I don't know about my relationship with God, whether it is good or not. Sometimes I don't even feel to pray. Sometimes I don't even feel the presence of God. So I may not be having relationship with God. So that is a wrong conclusion. Feelings, can, feelings cannot define your relationship with God. The feelings are there because of the incidents that are taking place. If they are not fundamentally related to your faith. And But one thing we need to understand is these feelings, they can be nurtured. Okay? The feelings can be changed. It is because feelings are not just a result of a particular event. Uh, you might have heard about this uh, ABC theory of feelings. A stands for uh, activating event. B stands for belief, C stands for consequent feeling. Sometimes we feel uh, if somebody did this, that's why I started feeling this. But reality is not because somebody did that, not because of just that event. It is because of what we are already believing. You know, in India, uh, if any elderly person comes, children put their legs on the table, the elderly people get offended. You all know about it, right? It is because in our culture, we are taught when elderly people come, we should not show our feet. That is irrespectful. That's not respectful. So because of that, what we feel, if anybody puts legs on top, we feel this is where really, you know, uh, this person is not respecting me at all. And we feel bad about it. And we feel sad about it. Go to Western countries. You know, the children put their legs on the tables, what not. And when the parents come and all, they don't mind. Because in their culture, it is not that they were not taught about this. Right? So, 
our feelings in india people get angry when somebody puts legs on top it is because in, in indians were believing putting legs on top is not right in western countries they are not feeling it because they they were not taught about it so really what's happening here is the emotions of anger uh, in india that comes not because of somebody put legs on top it is because we are we are believing putting legs on top is wrong and not respectful that is the reason we get angry so our emotions are not just based on the event they are based on what we are already believing so when we change what we are believing our emotions are going to change that is also called is uh, you know counselors and all call it cognitive behavior therapy you work on your reasons you work on your reason believe the right things when you believe the right things you will get the right emotions in the right, in the events so these feelings can be changed sometimes we feel we read the scripture and we we believe in certain things and we feel oh i'm not a, i'm not a, for example i'm saying i would like to say uh people say i don't feel the presence of god i don't feel the presence of god i don't feel the presence of god i believe in him i go to church i do all this i don't feel the presence of god that's what they say but there is there is a time that there is a possibility that you can feel the presence of god the moment you talk about god you feel the presence of god because the scripture said wherever two or three gather in my name i am there in their midst just feed your mind with this statement that where two or three gather in jesus name jesus is there that is the truth of the scripture and when we talk about jesus his presence is there that we need to change our minds according to the scripture when our mind changes the moment you talk about jesus let me tell you you will experience the tremendous power of uh, the presence of jesus any time you feel lonely you do, you try doing this find somebody and talk about jesus you will feel his presence and power however so when we change our minds that's why scripture says it all continuously ask us to change our minds when we change our minds our feelings also will change when we change what we are believing our feelings will change when we believe the right thing our feelings will be right so our beliefs they create our feelings so we need to focus on what we are believing and uh, uh and next thing is in ephesian 426 apostle paul says be angry do not sin do not let the sun go down on your anger so we it is natural that we all get feelings of anger and various other things but we uh, scripture encourages us it tells us and commands us you you can feel what you feel but do not act based on your feelings that's why people say whoever have anger issues if you are angry you be quiet and don't say or do anything in anger what happens if you say or do anything in anger we are going to hurt ourselves when we go, when we when we have given ourselves into a particular emotions we lose sense of our reason so we should be careful with that so scripture there are may various places uh, uh, it tells us you know when uh, you you can have you can you can experience your emotion but do not act based on that emotion that's what paul said be angry but do not sin various things also are there and another thing is it is very important for us to deal with our emotions if we ignore to deal with our feelings or emotions it creates a boomerang effect where the emotions they will just come back later if you go you had an issue you kind if it can be sometimes trauma can take in place in your life some kind of uh, loss might have happened in your life at the particular moment you might have not experienced the feelings that are related to that particular uh, loss or crisis but it is very important for us to deal with those feelings if we don't deal with them they'll come back to us later in one or other uh, damaging form so it is very important for us to deal with our emotions at the same time sometimes we may not release our emotions it is important for, for us 
and very good for us to find somebody a healthy relationship where we can release our uh, thoughts and emotions so that that can give us a good uh, boost uh, for the days to come and that will help us if we don't deal with those emotions and keep them continuously in our hearts uh, and don't deal with them and they are going to come back to us in some or other damaging forms and not just us in fact jesus also had gone through these emotions if you read bible in john chapter 11 34 35 we find jesus wept uh, at lazarus death he experienced the sense of loss sadness and in fact he literally physically expressed it by crying he felt such a deep emotional trauma so uh you know you know like you know in in, in india we have the saying no dard ko sorry mard ko dard nahi hota you know that we don't need to take that okay we can we better release the dard the pain when we release it we will be free from it and uh, uh he threw people out of the temple you know when he experienced the anger okay but that was a holy anger and i am not going to discuss about that more later we can discuss about it he went through all the emotions <coughs> that we go through and he went through that for our sake you know jesus experienced everything for our sake so that he would be uh, he would intimately know us what it is like to be a human so that when we are in need he can provide us the empathy that we require apostle paul says he was tempted in all ways in every area he was tempted but still he was without sin he underwent every pain and everything that a human goes through so that he may be able to relate to us that's why author of hebrews says uh come to the throne of god with confidence because we do not have a high priest who can who cannot empathize with us but in everything he had gone through everything that we go through so he can empathize with us so he ask us to come before the presence of god confidently so i said uh, when we have emotions it is good for us to release it in a healthy place in a healthy manner you know if you have a good friend with him you share the emotions and uh, uh, put your burden down otherwise there is definitely one particular place where you can release all your emotions that is at the presence of god in prayer you release all your emotions and it is not something that newly i am suggesting but it is from the scripture if you read the psalms we find so there are so many psalms of prayer where the author he uh, if you read the first half of the psalm he speaks everything that he is feeling he says uh, his enemies are around him they are they wanted to kill him they want to do this they want to do that and he also tells god you make this fellow to suffer like this you make that fellow to be dead like this he express all these emotions at the end what he says you know ultimately lord i know you are the sovereign you take you 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 lead me in this situation and i praise you because you are my salvation this is the pattern of most of these psalms so god gives us an opportunity where we can come and experience release our emotions and he is going to help us we can take comfort in the fact that god inspired all the writers of the psalms to express their emotions and that's why uh, we say we should not make doctrine out of psalms in psalm 51 where, where the david says do not take away your spirit from me okay and people make doctrine out of it and say if you do sin god will take away the spirit the reality is god gave freedom to david to experience the kind of suffer pain he feels the kind of guilt he feels he just let him exp- express it okay so the uh, the psalmists they always release their feelings their emotions in god's presence but at the end they realize god is sovereign and they believe uh, in the truth of the scripture and they put their faith in that scripture and uh, psalmist emotions ultimately never control or fully overwhelm him uh, but the psalmist faith rest upon god even in the midst of 
intense emotions. That is what we find in uh, Psalms. So we all go through all these emotions, sometimes distorted emotions. We all go through these pains and all. It is very natural for us. And they do not define our faith. They do not define the quality of our faith. They do not define the relationship that we have with God. And we need to make sure our truth of the scripture influence our emotions, but not our influence teach our faith. And the emotions can be nurtured. So let us, let us work towards nurturing our emotions based on the truth of the scripture. By believing continuously, focusing more on the truth of the scripture, we would be able to have the right feelings uh, in the right events. And we may have good the life that God intended for us. And ultimately, we may not be able to have perfect emotional life, but ultimately we can, we all have a right place where we can release our emotions and find rest that is at the foot of Jesus. Let's bring all that we have to the foot of Jesus who can offer help to us. So this is what I would I have wanted to share with you this week. If you have any uh, questions or if you want to add something, uh, please uh, feel free to add. And definitely we have a counselor, a master counselor here, Pastor Dan. He would be, uh, all the questions you can shoot to him, he would be, he would definitely answer. <laughs> yeah, certainly as a counselor, I have learned uh, uh, a fair bit on emotions and uh, responses and reactions of people emotionally. Uh, but of course, uh, there is, it's such a huge subject. There's so much to learn from that. I'll wait for any questions that you might have. I'll just add maybe a comment or two. But uh, let me give you an opportunity to respond. As always, you are thinking. While you're thinking, maybe I'll uh, uh, throw a question. I have heard uh, many times, Praveen, people asking, you know, this in different ways. Does God have emotions? Absolutely. Oh, God is uh, God created as an emotional beings because He has emotions. <laughs> and uh, one of the good examples we can take is Zephaniah chapter three, verse seventeen where he very greatly expresses his emotion. That is, uh, you know, the God of Israel is in our midst. He rejoices over you with singing and dancing, actually. In the real tra Hebrew translation, it is with singing and dancing. In English, somehow they remove the word dancing. So this, he's very happy. He sings over you. He dances for you. What can be a great expression of such a deep emotion? Yeah. Uh, and there are so many, uh, the anger we hear, you know, God expressed his anger. God expressed his uh, sorrow. So he felt so sorry in uh, particular places, you know. He, he is an emotional being and that is the reason he is able to relate to us. Sometimes we, in Tel Telugu people can understand this uh, uh, song. There is a song called which means Whatever you ask, whatever you think, ultimately God's will will be done. Okay. What happens is God becomes here uh, such a unchangeable person, even with his emotions. So no matter what you ask, no matter what you think, what he wants, that only will be happening. So we feel like he's like a rock stone where he cannot relate to our pain. And we hear in some movies also songs like, you know, the hero will be in pain and he sings to the God and says, are you there? Do you have ears or uh, eyes to see me or not? And they sing the songs. But our God is not like that. Okay. And there are places, one great example is Hezekiah's story. He changed particular uh, decision because uh, looking at the um, they are looking at uh, the prayer and all. However, that's not the thing. But one thing I would like to say uh, is this. 
God wants to relate to us emotionally. That's why he really expressed his emotions and he made us emotional beings so that we may also relate to him emotionally. So that's such a beautiful thing. We Christianity, in Christianity, especially the triune God uh, expresses with us. Yes, I think uh, uh, the reason uh, that question is, seems a little relevant is some, some philosophies, some religions, maybe some Eastern religions talk about God being beyond emotion. Uh, they don't like God to be, uh, you know, subject to any kind of emotion. They want God to be above it. And that's one of the reasons why some people get confused. You know, can God really have emotion? One of the things that I would like to say is that uh, in the scriptures, it is said God is love. And love obviously includes a, an emotional dimension. Uh, it has a relational, uh, you know, element to it. And uh, when the, wherever there is a relational element, there is a, a, a dimension of emotion. Uh, in case anybody, you know, have any thought on that. One single thought I would like to add to what you have just said. It is because um, we are in a place we start thinking emotions are something bad. We we consider emotions as weakness. Emotions are not our weaknesses. Both I'm talking about both positive and negative emotions. They are not our weaknesses. They are the way they are. Uh, they are like conduit. Like you know, they are a way we relate to the people, events, uh, objects, creation, and then ultimately to God also. Because people believe emotions are weaknesses, they want to rip God out of that <laughs> thing. Uh, emotions out of God. So that's a wrong thing. Any questions, people? What emotions are going through your mind? <laughs> Surya Murthy, can you uh, unmute yourself? We couldn't hear you. Is laughing an emotion? Uh, Pastor Dan. <laughs> uh, anyway, I'll tell you why I'm asking this. Yeah. God laughs at his enemies. Sometimes we read in the Bible. But uh, is there any place in the Bible where we see God laughing at a joke? Uh, I mean, uh, my only response to that is uh, laughing is actually a response to an emotion. Right? Uh, I, uh, the way I would look at it is uh, laughing is a response to an emotion. You can feel happy and, you know, uh, uh, laugh. Or you can feel a sense of victory and laugh. Uh, and the, the scripture you quoted perhaps will fit that bill. So laughing by itself may not be an emotion, but it's maybe a response to an emotion. It, it points to something happening, an emotional thing happening, happening in you. I don't know if that helps, Surya Murthy, but I'll just throw that out. Anyway, anyway, is there any place where you have seen God laughing at a joke? God laughing at a joke. God uh, is a, uh, you know, I mean, God has humor. The Bible has humor. And... Uh, you know, sometimes the way Jesus responds, you know, he, he responds in a, in a tongue-in-cheek way. I would think that is a, a higher grade of humor. So uh, I can only say that. And uh, uh, whether he laughs at humor, well, he enjoys humor. I could only say that much. <laughs> um, I would like to say one statement from Karl Barth. Karl Barth, he says, laughter is the serious business uh, in tri I mean, in triune God, uh, he says that. And uh, the scripture portion which I mentioned the other, I mean, just few minutes ago, uh, Zephaniah three seventeen, the God of Israel is in our midst. He rejoices over you with singing. 
so laughter is much less okay so that word rejoices it includes laughter uh, i believe i think uh, venessa you had a you had a thought uh, venessa if you had a thought uh, should yes, share yes. it and then berti yeah okay uh, i was wanting to say that yes i i have a lot of emotions uh, sometimes during mass there is a certain phase the um priest says that uh, it brings uh, tears to my eyes and uh, sometimes when i'm praying also then i turn emotional and i cry and sometimes when i'm praying i think of some funny incident that happens when i start laughing in my prayers during my prayers so i wonder okay crying it's okay that god accepts it that uh, okay i'm crying emotionally and i'm going to pray and that emotion becomes over that time but then when i start laughing when i think of a funny incident right and i start laughing i think i think to myself okay that is god accepting it that's why i'm laughing to him in my prayers Uh, i think uh, we couldn't hear you very well uh, uh, you know uh, vanessa but i i presume your one of your question is is it okay to laugh while you're praying is that the question you asked yes <laughs> <laughs> i think uh, pastor praveen will answer that <laughs> uh, yeah i feel uh, there is nothing wrong with laughing as you pray if you are uh, having you know feel laughter and we have exp- examples in bible also Uh, like uh, when the three visitors came to abraham's house uh, we all know sarah laughed but the reality is uh, before sarah laughed abraham was laughing okay so i believe that uh, god would not mind if you laugh if you feel anything uh, you know uh, funny or good out of happiness also we laugh so if there are anything uh, of such sort i don't think that god would be offended by that Okay. Party, go ahead. Um, in Proverbs, it's mentioned, "A fool's heart is in the house of mirth, but a wise man's heart is in the house of mourning." It's very important if you just think what it means. Again, I'll repeat. In Proverbs, it's mentioned, "A fool's heart." is in the house of mirth but a wise man's heart is in the house of mourning uh are you asking a question buddy or are you just making a statement uh... no i feel uh uh you know uh your laughter or merriment is seen as uh, you know not right if i can understand that proverb correctly and uh, uh, a house of mo- mo- uh, the wi- uh, it does it say house of a wise man maybe a, a ho- wise man's heart is in the house of mourning uh, there is a lot of uh, if you just contemplate if you just meditate on it it uh, it says a lot in that you see okay. any thought probably on that uh, i feel i need to read the context then all i would be able to make comment on right. it's in proverbs praveen yeah well i think uh, that obviously is a situational thing you know uh, that that verse is probably uh, you know talking about that there are situations when you should be mourning uh and you are going into you know the house of mirth the house of you know uh where you do not recognize the need for mourning even even jesus i think says you know when uh, he chides the teachers of the law that you know they uh, uh they, they don't understand the scriptures because they are doing things in a situation which is not right so it does not mean that we should always live in a house of mourning it does not mean that it is wrong to be happy uh it 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 means that when you should be mourning 
you shouldn't be, you know, uh, uh, making it flippant and live flippantly. Maybe I'll, I'll just further add that emotion by itself is not, is not wrong. Emotions that lead you to wrong action is what is wrong. It's the wrong action which is wrong. Emotion by itself is not wrong. So uh, uh, in that context, maybe we can take what the scripture in the book of Proverbs in that from that particular context. Yes, Bertie, go ahead. The question of mirth is mentioned that it's more like merriment, as you say, flippant behavior yeah. and uh, not taking, uh, as you rightly say in the situation, yeah. uh, but it also speaks generally of life. But this has got nothing to do with happiness. As you say, Ms. Zakari, it doesn't say that God is, uh, that we, shouldn't, we should not be happy. God says in, I uh, think, Psalm, blessed is the man who fears God, uh, happy, uh, blessed and happy. Not only blessed, but blessed and happy is the man who fears God, who delights greatly in his commandments. Right. Blessed and happy. You see, so uh, I'm not talking about that. That proverb is not nothing to do with happiness, nothing to do of, uh, it's not, it's not, wrong to be happy. Happy has is a different thing altogether. Uh, this is talking about what you say flippant. Yeah. Uh, fri you know, frivolous, uh, flippant uh, behavior, you know, sort of uh, almost you could say uh, a nerd, N-E-R-D, if you can understand, a nerd. Uh, yeah, which is, uh, you know, something that, you know, you are not um, I can't explain it. Uh, you are like happy is a state of heart. Yes, I mean uh, we all uh, we should all be experiencing happiness in us. Yeah, but uh, yeah, yeah, that way. So what we are saying is that uh, don't generalize with that scripture. It is, I think, uh, it, it is it fits into a particular context and it should not be generalized. Yes, Prabhu. Yeah. Can I just yeah. add a single thought? Uh, like it is not uh, uh, properly interpreted uh, the particular scripture in its context. But uh, as I hear it for the first time, also I feel this is what I feel this actually. I feel the author is trying to say, you know, uh, you know, it is it is good for us to go to the people who are mourning, as Jesus said, weep with those who are weeping, rather than going to people who are say, laughing and uh, merry. So a wise man, he, he always goes to the people who are in pain and empathize with them and moans with them. A foolish man will be focusing only on going and having fun. So I, the, at first hearing, I'm, as I said, it is not interpreting in the context. As I hear first, this is what comes into my mind. As Jesus said, moan with those who moan. Rekha, did you have a thought? I thought uh, you had your hand up. Uh, this happiness is uh, something that we are to be. We are happy. It's an inward thing, and uh, nothing to do with laughing and you know and merriment or anything. You know, we are happy because we are blessed, and it's a it's a sound heart. Remember, it says the heart of the man. You know, uh, not it's uh, the tongue. Of course, uh, what we express comes from the heart. You know, uh, but the heart is something God touches upon it. So uh, I suppose we have to be careful. Yeah. Right. Okay, well, the time is more or less gone. Uh, we just passed the hour. Um, any, any, any final thoughts or questions? Any comments? Okay. I just want to make uh, two comments, uh, and that is, I think, two important statements, Praveen, that you made. I just want to reiterate that. One is, that our emotions must be influenced, must be informed, must be taught by our belief system, not vice versa. I think that's an important point that uh, we need to keep in mind. A second important point is emotions does not measure our faith, is not the measure of our faith. So uh, I think that's another very important point to keep in mind. Uh, so with that, I think we can wrap up. Final, Praveen, any final thoughts? No. Okay. All right. Thank you again for joining us. And uh, 
perhaps if uh, Anil is okay and he has the energy, he can lead us in a closing prayer. Anil, is that okay? You need to unmute. Thank you. <clears throat> Let's bow our heads. Almighty God in heaven, Father, we are so very grateful for all your wonderful blessings that you shower upon us, Lord. Lord, we are very grateful for our meeting that we can meet over Zoom every Wednesdays. We are grateful that we are able to give you the glory and to, Lord, uh, discuss about these spiritual matters, Lord. Oh, Lord, as we have learned today, <clears throat> emotion should not uh, overpower us, rather. And we should allow our emotions, but they should not define us, Lord. Our faith should define what we are, Lord. So thank you, Lord, for these understandings that you give us. We continue to pray for your guidance through your faithful ministers, Lord. Guide us and help us to stay on the straight and narrow path. And in everything that we do, may we give you the glory, Lord. So thank you, Lord, and just bless this meeting and bless each one of us and those also who are not, who are not able to make it, God. And particularly pray for those who are going through difficulties of illness and so on. May you intervene, Lord, and provide aid and comfort. Thank you, Lord. We pray and ask all this in Jesus' holy name. Amen. 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 And thank you all. Have a, a good rest of the day. God bless you all. Look forward to seeing you again soon.